Hi, welcome to Buick headquarters in Flint, Michigan. We're here to preview some of the highlights of the 1990 cars. Just across the street from here is the enormous Buick City complex. The last rear drive Buicks built in Flint rolled off the line here in February 1985. But even then, a massive rebuilding effort was well underway. The goal was to transform the 50-year-old plus facility into a highly modern assembly center, a plant that would produce cars the equal of any in the world. Today, that dream is a reality. In a recent customer survey, the market research firm J.D. Power and Associates set out to determine the best made 1989 cars. The 89 LeSabre, built right here in Buick City, plays second. Now, that's quite an achievement, especially when you consider of all the cars polled, and there were 160 altogether, only three of the cars in the top 10 are from U.S. automakers. And better yet, one of those was another Buick, the 89 Riviera. As the survey demonstrates, Buick is firmly committed to high quality and increased customer satisfaction. And this philosophy is reflected in the 1990 cars. Many of the new features are subtle refinements designed to enhance the owner's comfort and convenience, but some are eye-catching and strongly state Buick's innovative approach to producing fine luxury automobiles. So now, let's get down to business. We'll start by looking at a car that many people have been waiting for. And here it is, the exciting new Riata convertible. When lowered, the soft top is stowed completely out of sight beneath a flush mounted tonneau panel. The resulting clean, unbroken body lines emphasize Riata's already sleek and sporty character. As in the Riata Coupe, the convertible interior is modern and luxurious, with leather-covered bucket seats and matching leather trim throughout. Notice that the instrumentation has been considerably changed for the new model year. This new style instrument panel also appears in the 1990 Riviera. In concert with the high-tech status of these premium cars, the new design instrument cluster features the latest vacuum fluorescent display technology. The new steering wheel incorporates the Supplemental Inflatable Restraint, or SIR system. The SIR system is standard on all 1990 Riata and Riviera models. Now, let's examine how the convertible top works, how to raise and lower it. It's pretty straightforward, but it's probably a good idea for everyone in the dealership to see it done once. To open the tonneau, turn the ignition to the run position, check that the deck lid is closed, then press the release switch. The tonneau cover hinges are sprung with two torque rods that lift it up and clear of the top. The top is then raised manually by pulling the front bow toward the windshield. Pull in the center of the bow so that it doesn't twist. Two latch pins on the top fit into strikers on top of the windshield. With the latch pins inserted, hold the top down and turn the latches to lock the top in place against the windshield. When the top is pulled forward, the rear section with the back glass should lift. Pull it straight up to ensure clearance. Then, pushing in the center area, lower the tonneau cover so that the locks engage on both sides. To lower the rear section, pull the lever on the driver's side of the top and release the detent position. Lower the rear section firmly so that the pins engage the pull-down motors in the tonneau cover. With the pins in place, press the switch to activate the motors. Hold the switch on just long enough so that the weather stripping on the rear of the top is held snugly against the tonneau cover. All that remains is to arrange the headliner using the hook and eye type fasteners. Lowering the top is pretty much the reverse of the raising procedure. With the ignition and run, press the pull down button to release the rear section and lift it until it clicks into the detent position. Release the tonneau cover and unlock the latches on the front of the top. The top can then be folded back. Before folding the top back, turn the front latches to the closed position against the frame. Also, the tonneau cover locks do not operate unless the deck lid is closed. Similarly, the deck lid lock does not release while the tonneau cover is open. This feature prevents damage that could occur if both were opened at the same time. The instrument panel on the 1990 Riviera and Riata has been extensively redesigned. In addition to the speedometer and tack, the display includes a full set of analog type gauges. 
By pushing the Speedo Select button on the left side of the panel, the driver can choose between an analog-style speedometer gauge and a digital gauge, or, if desired, both types can be displayed simultaneously. A test button activates all the panel lights to check for proper operation. Perhaps the most significant instrumentation change is the use of push-button-style switches for the climate and entertainment system controls, controls that were formerly incorporated in the CRT screen. However, all of these self-diagnostic functions and troubleshooting features associated with the CRT are retained. The information is simply accessed in a slightly different way. When switched to the service mode, the electronic climate control panel becomes the control center for onboard diagnosis. To enter the service mode, press the off and temperature up switches on the ECC and hold for three seconds. In the service mode, the odometer and trip odometer segment of the instrument cluster becomes a miniature display screen. Any stored ECM trouble codes are displayed first, followed by codes from the BCM and the new SIR system. The system also displays diagnostic information from the ECM, BCM, SIR, and the instrument panel cluster. The status lights on the ECC panel also provide information on how the ECM and BCM are reading certain sensors. The new Riata and Riviera instrument panels are another example of Buick's commitment to exceeding the expectations of our customers. By the way, you can find complete details on how to use the extensive onboard diagnostic capabilities of these cars in the 1990 Riviera and Riata new product information manual. I mentioned that the Supplemental Inflatable Restraint, or SIR system, is standard equipment on the new Riviera and Riata. The system is designed to supplement the car's safety belts in the event of a front-end collision. When such a collision occurs, an airbag is deployed rapidly from the steering wheel. The inflating bag absorbs energy to reduce the forward movement of the driver. The airbag deflates immediately after full deployment. In addition to the airbag, the SIR system includes an energy-absorbing knee bolster. The collapsible steering column is also retained. When servicing SIR-related components, a number of special handling and service precautions must be observed. Following the correct procedures is extremely important to avoid unwanted SIR deployment and to guard against personal injury or damage to the system. To ensure that the correct service, handling, and inspection procedures are fully understood, GM training centers are offering training classes for the SIR system. With this in mind, let's look very briefly at how the SIR works. The two main components of the SIR system are the Diagnostic Energy Reserve Module, or DERM, and the deployment loop. The DERM maintains a 36-volt reserve energy supply for several seconds so that the system can still deploy if ignition voltage is low or lost during the collision. The DERM also monitors the SIR components for proper electrical connections and provides diagnostic information. To signal that SIR components are functioning properly, the inflatable restraint indicator lamp in the instrument cluster flashes seven to nine times when the ignition key is turned to the run, bulb test, or start positions. If a fault is detected by any component, the DERM sets a trouble code and uses the indicator lamp to signal the driver. The deployment loop contains the airbag itself, the inflator module, and the components to activate the system in the event of a collision. The system uses one arming sensor and two discriminating sensors. The arming sensor and the passenger compartment discriminating sensor are contained in a single housing under the instrument panel. The second discriminating sensor, the forward sensor, is mounted by the radiator. The electrical contacts in each sensor are normally open. When the speed of the car changes rapidly enough to indicate a collision, the contacts in the arming sensor close first and ignition or derm reserve power is supplied to the inflator module in the steering wheel. If the contacts in either of the two discriminating sensors close at the same time as those of the arming sensor, the deployment loop circuit is grounded and the inflator module is activated. The inflator module behind the steering wheel pad contains a canister of material that produces gas when activated and rapidly fills the airbag. A coil housed in the steering column provides electrical connection to the inflator module while allowing the wheel to turn freely. A resistor module is inserted in the harness between the inflator module and the derm. 
the resistors in the module are balanced with resistors in each of the sensors. The derm uses the resistor values to monitor the system for proper operation. You can expect to see more extensive use of SIR in future Buicks. Another trend-setting standard feature on the 90 Riviera and Riata is the passkey security system. The system uses a special ignition key and lock cylinder. Embedded in each pass ignition key is a small pellet with a fixed resistance value. When the key is inserted in the ignition, this pellet sits between contacts in the lock cylinder. The logic for the system is contained in the passkey module located under the instrument panel. The module has inputs from the ignition circuit and the resistor contacts in the lock cylinder. Outputs from the module go to the ground side of a starter enable relay, an instrument panel display, and to a fuel enable input on the ECM. When the ignition key is inserted and the ignition is turned on, the pass key module uses the contacts in the lock cylinder to read the resistance value of the pellet in the key. The module compares the resistance of the key pellet to the resistance value stored in the module's memory. If the two values match, the starter enable relay is grounded and a pulse signal is sent to the ECM fuel enable input. The engine then starts normally. If the wrong key is used, the pass key module does not enable the starter or signal the ECM, so the car won't start. Then, when the ignition is turned off, a timer in the pass key module is activated and the engine cannot be started for three minutes even if the correct key is used. If any attempt is made to start the car during the three minute delay, the timer starts over from the beginning. This feature prevents a would-be thief from randomly trying different key codes to start the engine. The passkey module records the resistance value code of the first ignition key used to start the engine. That code is then stored permanently in the module memory. Copy keys must be cut from blanks with the same code as the original. A special interrogator tool is used to determine the key's resistance code from a total of 15 possible passkey resistance values. If a key is lost, the code can be obtained from the new vehicle invoice. If the invoice information cannot be obtained, then the mechanical cut of the lost key must be determined from the ignition lock cylinder or the key knockouts. If the mechanical cut cannot be determined, the cylinder lock must be replaced. When a key with the correct mechanical cut has been obtained, the interrogator tool can be used to determine the code stored in the pass key module. You'll find full details on this procedure in the know-how reference manual. Another eagerly awaited new model is the latest addition to Buick's popular midsize car line, the Regal Sedan. The new front end treatment gives the four-door Regal a personality all of its own. The new design features a distinctive grille and wraparound composite headlamps. Notice that the additional doors have not disturbed the smooth flowing body lines that distinguish the Regal. The new body treatment is also carried to the rear of the car. The sedan has wraparound tail lamp lenses and backup lamps are integrated into the rear bumper. An interesting new option is the dual zone heater and air control. Individual slider controls allow the driver and the front seat passenger to adjust the air temperature separately within each seating zone. The 3.1 liter 60 degree V6 introduced this year continues to be the standard engine for the Regal sedan and coupe, but the mid-year introduction of the Regal four-door will also mark the debut of a new engine option. The 3800 tuned port injection engine or EV6 represents another phase in the continuing evolution of this world-class Buick power plant. In its newest form, the 3800 has been refined to increase power and fuel efficiency. At the same time, the durability and the overall serviceability also have been improved. For improved serviceability, the fuel pressure regulator can now be removed easily without having to disassemble the fuel rail. The most noticeable change is the feature that gives the engine its new tuned port name, the redesigned intake manifold. The new manifold is a two-piece assembly. The upper portion contains the tuned equal length runners. The runner design gives the engine a broader torque range and improves air-fuel mixture control. 
Another noticeable change concerns the flywheel. The number of retaining bolts is increased from six to eight. The broader distribution of clamp load reduces the stress points and increases the durability of the flywheel assembly. There are also some modifications on the front of the engine. The end of the crankshaft, for instance, is tapered so the harmonic balancer is now press fit to the shaft. The tighter fit further reduces the possibility of balancer chucking. A special puller must be used to remove the balancer. Notice a new cover is used to protect the crankshaft sensor from flying debris. When the front cover is removed, the modified timing chain and damper assembly can be seen. The new design reduces engine noise. A new camshaft thrust plate located on the front of the block helps prevent cam chucking. The camshaft lobes are slightly modified so that the exhaust valves remain open longer. This produces cleaner emissions and eliminates the need for an EGR system. The new lobe profile also reduces valve train noise. A baffle has been added inside the oil pan to help reduce foaming and improve oil supply. The main bearing configuration is also altered for better engine oiling. Notice that the rope type rear crankshaft seal is replaced by a lip seal. The new design provides improved sealing and serviceability. With the EV6 3800 and other innovations we've seen, the 1990 model year should be a good one for Buick. And there's much more to come as Buick travels the great American road into the 90s and beyond. The great American